intercostal nerves are the nerves which run in the intercostal spaces. These nerves are also known as the thoracic spinal nerves. These are 12 pair of nerves which are coming from the thoracic part of the spinal cord. These nerves not only supply the thoracic wall but they also supply the anterior abdominal wall and the upper part of the gluten region. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the anatomy of the intercostal nerves. Welcome everyone, myself Dr. Ankit Khandelwal, MBBS NMS in anatomy. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Anatomy Explained. So in this particular video, we are going to discuss the anatomy of the intercostal nerves, also known as thoracic spinal nerves. So let us go through the anatomy of the intercostal nerves. If we look at the intercostal nerve, if we look at the intercostal nerve, which is also known as the thoracic spinal nerves. So these are how much? These are actually 12 pairs of nerves which are coming out from the thoracic part of the spinal cord. So let us see how they come out and how they distribute into the thoracic wall and the anterior abdominal wall. Imagine this is our spinal cord over here. Okay, and here we have the gray horn inside and outside we have the white horn. So suppose this is the anterior part and that is the posterior part. From the anterior part we all know the anterior part gives rise to the ventral roots. The ventral roots or the motor roots they will be coming out from the anterior part of the gray horn. Into the posterior uh, part of the gray horn there is a dorsal root ganglia over here and it enters in the form of a sensory root. So this is your dorsal root also known as a sensory root. Both of these ventral root and this dorsal root, which are actually motor and sensory, they are going to combine, they are going to fuse and they will form the main trunk of the spinal nerve. So this will basically form what? This will basically form our trunk of the spinal nerve. This trunk of the spinal nerve is the one that comes out of the intervertebral foramen. So this is, is the nerve which is actually coming out from the intervertebral foramen. As it comes out from the intervertebral foramen, it soon divides into a thickened ventral rami and not so thickened, a thin one that is known as the dorsal rami. The difference in the thickness of the ventral rami and the dorsal rami is because of the fact that ventral rami is going to supply a pretty much larger area of the body compared to the dorsal rami which is going to supply a very smaller area of the body. Remember there is one more thing and that is your in the thoracic area we have a sympathetic ganglia that is a chain of sympathetic ganglia which is running from superior to inferior in the around the uh, paravertebral spaces. Now these ventral root and dorsal root they will also be giving off the branches to this sympathetic chain so it will have a preganglionic which is also known as a white rami which will actually relay in the sympathetic chain and from there the post ganglionic that will come out that is known as the gray rami. So this post ganglionic will be our gray rami. Remember the post ganglionic gray rami lies more medial than the pre ganglionic white rami inside the sympathetic chain. Now this post ganglionic gray rami is going to enter into the trunk of the spinal nerve and it is going to pass with both the ventral and the dorsal rami. So what is the basic difference over here? The basic difference is that the ventral roots and the dorsal roots which are actually pure motor and pure sensory they combine and they form the spinal nerve. The spinal nerve will also have the post ganglionic parts coming from the sympathetic chain and that will travel along with the ventral rami and dorsal rami. So both the ventral rami and dorsal rami they will be carrying the sympathetic plus also the motor and the sensory components of the nerves plus our sympathetic. So all the rami and the trunk of the spinal nerve they are actually the mixed nerves. Then what happens is that the dorsal rami has to go back. So dorsal rami goes dorsally and it supplies a small patch of skin and few muscles over here. All that will give off branches as the lateral and the medial branches which, which will give off the cutaneous branches also. But only a very narrow patch of skin on the dorsum of the body. All the posterior, lateral and anterior part of the trunk that is including both the thoracic wall and the abdominal wall will be supplied by this ventral rami. So basically this ventral rami take a huge course from the spinal cord laterally, anteriorly and medially. It will supplying over here. So therefore it gives off branches in the around the mid axillary plane 
that is your lateral cutaneous branches and as it reaches the anterior midline it will also give the anterior cutaneous branches these lateral cutaneous branches and these anterior cutaneous branches these are the one as the name suggests the cutaneous so these are the ones they will be reaching towards the skin so these are your anterior and the lateral cutaneous branches this was a general idea of the typical spinal nerve which also includes the intercostal nerve or also known as the thoracic spinal nerve remember these are 12 pairs which are going to supply the trunk wall of the trunk that is thorax and abdomen plus also the gluteal region so let us see an image showing you the same distribution of the branches this is an image of the same spinal nerve just showing you the different branches let us now quickly highlight over here what are the various branches so here we have the anterior horn of the spinal cord here we have the posterior horn from the anterior horn comes the ventral root into the posterior horn enters the dorsal root they both will combine and they will form the trunk of the spinal nerve and over here you are also seeing the sympathetic ganglia then this trunk of the spinal nerve will soon divide into a ventral rami and a dorsal rami you can very well see the dorsal rami is going back it is dividing into a lateral branch and a medial branch which will subsequently give off some of the cutaneous branches and they will also supply a small patch of muscles present posteriorly which are basically our erector spiny group of muscles which includes a other which, which actually known as the two extensor muscles they are the, the muscles present on the back region around the center then coming to the ventral rami now these ventral rami are the main branches of the spinal nerve which are going to supply the wall so you can see they are taking a huge course from posterior lateral then they are coming anteriorly and till the midline in their course they will give off various branches which will supply the walls of the trunk now already in the previous video we have discussed the thoracic wall so these are the ones they will be supplying the thoracic wall and the abdominal wall which actually starts from the skin and they reach the parietal layers in the thorax we call them as parietal pleura in the abdomen we call it as parietal peritoneum so these intercostal nerves are going to supply that much you can see over here the lateral cutaneous branch is coming and the medial cutaneous branch is coming over here now there is a applied also which we should be knowing is that we all know that the spinal cord is actually inside a bony cage which is known as a vertebral canal which is known as a vertebral canal which is actually inside the vertebrae which are inside all the vertebrae now any pathology in the vertebrae is particularly if you take an infection like mycobacterium tuberculosis that is a tb of the spine now the the body of the vertebrae are infected in these diseases so the pus and the infection could be carried from the vertebrae through this perineural sheaths and they can be traveling with the root or with the trunk of the nerves now as these nerves they are giving off the branches which are coming through the skin so all these nerves which are coming through the or they are perforating the whole wall coming onto the skin the pus can be shown in the skin as a cold abscess so these are the three places one place in the posterior midline the second place over here in the mid axillary that is the lateral part and the third place over here anteriorly so there could be a collection of cold abscess over here the origin of the abscess is not these places but origin of the abscess could be a chronic infection lying in the vertebral canal in the vertebral bodies so that could be one applied so therefore we should be knowing the anatomy of the main spinal nerve or a thoracic nerve or intercostal nerve what are the various branches which is giving it now as we have just said that they supply the wall of the trunk which includes the thoracic and the abdomen so let us quickly look over here what are the layers in the thoracic wall this we have already done in the previous video for more description you can watch the previous video so it is ranging from the skin over here from the skin over here up till the parietal pleura over here so from here to here everything is being supplied by this intercostal nerve you can see the intercostal nerve in the ribs they are lying where they are lying just in the costal group inside the costal group near the lower border of the rib inside the lower border of the lower rib, uh, lower border of the rib this is the place which is known as the costal group which contains these three neurovascular structures over here the intercostal nerve so from here the intercostal nerves are lying over here and they will be supplying the thoracic wall and also the abdominal wall so now we have to understand one more question that normally comes from the intercostal nerves that intercostal nerves are there but which intercostal nerves are known as the typical intercostal nerves as we have seen that intercostal nerves they serve a huge area the whole trunk so all of the nerves cannot be called as typical out of t1 to t12 intercostal nerves 12 pairs 
only T3 to T6, that is only these four intercostal nerves, four intercostal nerves are given the name of the typical intercostal nerves. So therefore, we should understand what is this meaning of typical intercostal nerve. Typical intercostal nerves means that the nerves in this typical category will only will only supply the thoracic wall. They won't go into any other area. They won't go into the upper limb. They won't go into the abdomen. They won't go anywhere else. So these are only confined up till the thoracic wall. Out of these 12 pair, only T3, T4, T5 and T6, only these four, they are serving the thoracic wall. Others, they are going in, I mean, uh, also supplying thoracic wall but others are also supplying other parts that's in spite of supplying thoracic wall they also supply the other parts for example if we talk of what are those nerves then t1 over here it forms a part of brachial plexus so that will supply the upper limb t2 it's lateral cutaneous branch it's lateral cutaneous branch gives off the cutaneous sensation to the floor of axilla to the floor of axilla and the upper part of the medial arm, upper part of the medial arm. So that is basically called as what this nerve, this little cutaneous branch of the T2 that is also a question in itself is called as intercostobrachial nerve. That is called as intercostobrachial nerve. So whole of the T2 is not intercostobrachial, only its little cutaneous branch. Now below this T6, below this T6, we have T7 to T12. They actually go down into the abdominal wall and they supply the abdominal wall plus this T12 will also go and supply the upper part of the gluteal region upper part of the gluteal region so obviously these are serving the body not just the thoracic but outside the thoracic also therefore these are known as the atypical intercostal nerves and only these four T3, 4, 5 and 6 these are known as the typical intercostal nerves let us see an image on how these nerves are distributed in the body this is how these nerves are distributed in the body and here what we can see is they start from T2 over here. Why? Because T1 has gone into the upper limb. T1 has got in, into the upper limb as in the form of brachial plexus, in the form of brachial plexus. The, T, the lateral cutaneous branch of T2 over here is the intercostal brachial nerve. Now you can see from T2 to T12, they are giving up the anterior cutaneous branches. So up till T6, they are in the thoracic wall. Now be, below this T7, they have now entered where they entered into the abdominal wall. The same happens on the lateral part, that is the lateral cutaneous branches. These are your lateral cutaneous branches. These lateral cutaneous branches on T3, 4, 5 and 6, they are in the thoracic wall. But below this T7 to T11, they will be lying in the lateral part of the abdominal wall. And this T12 over here, it will jump over the iliac crest, it will go to the upper part of the gluteal region. Therefore, what we see is the thoracic spinal nerves, the intercostal nerves, not only supply the thoracic area, but also the abdomen and the upper part of the gluteal area. Okay. So that was a brief discussion on the anatomy of the intercostal nerve. I hope you enjoyed this basic anatomy of the intercostal nerve. Uh, that, thank you for your time guys. Myself Dr. Ankit Handelwal and this is my YouTube channel Anatomy Explained. For more videos, kindly subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. That's all. Thank you for your time. All the best.